Hi, folks. Steve Urban here, founder and CEO at RiderFlex. We hope you enjoy today's podcast. And as a reminder, please subscribe to the RiderFlex show for updates on new episodes. And by the way, if you haven't already, check out the book we recently launched, The RiderFlex Guide, Inspiring and Hiring, available for purchase on Amazon. And now, a quick word from our sponsor. Try the number one marketing platform for small business. Everything you need from design to marketing to CRM. Learn more at marketing360.com. Marketing 360. Fuel your brand. All right. Jeff and Allie went on the Rider Flex podcast. How you doing, guys? So good. Awesome. So good. Thanks for having us on. We're really excited to be here. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, you know, I've had a lot of coaches on, uh, you know, business coaches, uh, self-help coaches, I mean, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, be interesting to get into it with you guys and see how you're, you know, different or what you specialize in or focus on. Cause I've had a bunch of those on, maybe, you know, some of them, I don't know, but we can get into that. So, uh, I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to discussing. I did See, I watched a little YouTube video uh, of you guys earlier this morning when I was on the treadmill and did a little homework. So I got a little feel for your style, I think. Okay. <laughs> That's great. I'm curious about the video of that. And, and we're still on. This is a good deal. Yeah, like, yeah you're still on. Yeah, you're still on. Right. Yeah. You're in Utah. For the listeners, you're in Utah today? Salt yeah. Lake? Yes. yes. So okay. we're in Salt Lake. Yeah. Well, give me, give me the story a little bit personally before we get into business. Um, Allie, you want to, you know, even before your marriage, right? Um, uh, mom, dad, siblings, where you grew up, you want to give me a little history? Sure. You don't mind? Sure. So I'm a Midwest girl, grew up in Minnesota. Um, oh, there's the accent. Most- I heard it right yeah, there. Minnesota. You, the did you say Minnesota? Minnesota. Yeah. You said yeah. Minnesota. Okay. Sorry. I didn't Ever- mean to interrupt. No, <laughs> you're good. good. The second I say it, like everyone's like, oh, there it is. The accent. Is. Yeah, you'll pick up on it. Um, but so grew up in Minnesota. Um, my parents went to ministry school actually, as I was growing up. So we okay. moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma for a few years, right. um, then back to Minnesota over to Wisconsin, um, but stayed around Minneapolis, St. Paul, like twin cities area for high school. Is that where you graduated from that area? Yes. Graduated in Wisconsin, Hudson, Wisconsin. Okay. So it's a beautiful river town right off of the St. Croix uh, River. Okay. Um, and so that's where I grew up. My parents, um, they did kind of two major things. They started church. And so we were really involved as kids just okay. with the church, helping run things, you know, kids ministry, cafe, all the things. Um, I actually thought I was one of the pastors when I was little. <laughs> we were so involved with everything. Yeah. Um and then also family business. So my grandma um, on my dad's side was an alcoholic while he was growing up and okay. she went in and out of treatment, um, finally got sober, I think probably in her forties. And then okay. she decided she wanted to give back. And so actually started a halfway home. Oh. Um, and then the company grew. She opened up. Uh, Wait, let me interrupt oh, here. It was a halfway home, but it was there. It was her dad's actual home. Well, yeah, it started <laughs> there yeah, that's a, yeah. in their home. Yeah. <laughs> when he was a kid, he'd come downstairs. He's like 12 and there'd be like some people sleeping in the living room. Really? The beginning of the halfway house. Yeah. He talks about how he kept oh, wow. getting bumped out of his room to make more space for these people. So he eventually ended up living in the attic because like all the other bedrooms in the house were full. Yeah. Where was grant? Where was grandpa? Um, they, so my dad's parents had gotten divorced. Okay. Um, okay. But so this was living with my grandma, Virginia. She was a very eccentric type woman and personality. Okay. I'm told I take after her more than anyone else. So that okay. gives me just right. a little bit of context, but um, so she started this, this company, um, really giving back and serving people who had been chemically dependent, okay. helping them get a fresh start. And so that's where the family business started. All right. Um, my grandma passed away pretty, pretty young in her seventies. And so my dad took over the business, um, okay. while he so, continued to minister as well. Okay. Yep. Did those alongside of each other for a okay. few years and then right. eventually had to decide which, route he was going to go in. So he took over, he went full-time into the family business and really 
through that in a big way. And so and, I was a part uh, of that for 16 years. And I see, um, I see your mom was with you guys on, I mean, she, she helped with the, with the business too. She ran the she business. Helped, with your dad. Yep, yeah. She was just along for the ride always and everything okay. so part of cool. the church, part of the business. Yeah. How many siblings? <clears throat> just one sister, older sister, one, one sister. Okay. Neither of us set out to work at the family business, but we both did. She was my boss for many years and your sister was. Yes. Yes. Oh, how, yeah, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on there with the family. <laughs> it was, it was really a family yeah. affair, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but it was wonderful. And we really loved working together. It was a really special time in my career. And um, okay, that's cool. Was that yeah. before college? Was that before school or no? Or both? So or? When I started college, I started working at the family business very part time. I was never going to really work there, but I was just making uh -huh. some money, you know, and ended up never leaving at least for 16 years, over 16 years. So was well, that part of the reason you majored in psychology then? Is that because yeah, it's, um, it's kind of tied or what were your, what was your thought process there? Yeah. I was going to do interior design or psychology. Don't ask me. What, like, <laughs> Those go together. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like I, I don't quite know. Uh, You'd be dumb at that age. Uh, right. Uh, so okay. I went to psychology because I okay. loved my, my psych classes um, doing generals in college. And so I just went that route, never okay. fully used it, but of course it came into handy with, um, working yeah. services yeah. for mm -hmm. sure. For, yeah. for sure. Uh, now let me ask you, were you, were you just a good kid the whole time? I mean, did you get in any I, trouble? I mean, was there anything, oh. I mean, do you have anything in there? Like no dirt. Uh, like I didn't get in trouble for like, I was the sneaky kind. Right. So no, oh, okay. like I was, I okay. was a perfect child. She didn't, yeah. get, she didn't get caught. That was the thing. You never had to call your dad from like the sheriff's office or anything cool, anything fun oh, like that. <laughs> I actually, I did. I you did. Oh, here we go. Okay, now we're now it's getting interesting. I got, I'm learning this for the first time. Are you <laughs> okay? So I got um, mall security like oh. arrested for shoplifting. Yeah, and and I, I had to call my dad from from the little mall jail. Um, and they were asking for my parents' information. And I remember like telling them the wrong phone number because I was like, they're not calling my parents, but somehow they like you told them the wrong I number. I told them purpose? the wrong phone number. <laughs> did your dad come and get you? Did, you? did your dad come get you? He did. Yeah. They they got a hold of him magically still, <laughs> even though <laughs> man, wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. You know what's so interesting? Uh everybody's got a little something right everybody's got a little something in there right well so okay so that's your big that's the worst thing you you did when you were you were younger that what you'd call yeah. you okay all right all right that's good okay and then and then um real quick before we get over to jeff though uh this is not your first marriage is that accurate that is correct that's correct it's amazing yeah. how i know these things isn't it isn't that, wow. isn't that amazing <laughs> you went deep <laughs> What, tell me, so what happened? Did you get married like, early or what, what's up. the story? Yeah. What's the story, Allie? Well, so both, um, both Jeff and I lost our first spouse. So mm -hmm. lost, husband, lost. Oh, they, lost as in they, they passed, passed, passed away. Passed. They both, I see. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. So my husband, I started dating him when I was about 18 years old. We got married at age 23. So did get yeah. married somewhat early and young. Um, mm -hmm. And then in 2018, May of 2018, so almost five mm -hmm. years ago at this point, five years, um, he passed away like just suddenly. We there were no previous health concerns or indicators or anything, so what, it was. What, um, what you, I mean, you just woke up and he was gone, or what? What, so what happened? We were up at the family cabin with my parents and my sister and brother-in-law. Um, and we were riding around on a side by side. We were picking up sticks, doing yard work, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, okay. So at this point, I was how I forget like age. I was thirty one years old. He was okay. thirty three. Okay. Um, we had our two boys, Elijah and Amos, um, who had been adopted, and that's a whole nother story. Yeah, you I know, see. but okay. So um, so Elijah was Elijah was three 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 years old. And Amos was like Amos, nine months old. Nine months. Yep. So we're riding around in the side-by-side. -side. Amos was right between us. And um, all of a sudden, Tyler, uh, my husband, just slumped over kind of on top of me. And 
I had no idea what was going on. At first I thought he was like being goofy and playing around and uh, realized there was something wrong. And so um, I yelled for my parents and both of them tried to do, you know, CPR and wow. uh, we called 911 immediately, but we were like four hours kind of up North outside of the mm. Twin Cities area. Um, mm. Mm. And so in a little bit more of a remote area where it took a really long time for first responders to obviously first show up, but then the ambulance and they had even called a helicopter to come get them. But mm. Um, mm. It, everything was just too late. It was a heart issue and um, oh, they were never, never able to revive him. And so, wow, that is tragic. I'm so sorry that that uh, happened to you. Holy cow. That probably shaped a bunch of other things in your life as you've moved along absolutely. here. Yeah. Um, wow. That's terrible. Um, could you, do you mind me asking that sometimes I get really personal on these things. Not could you, could okay. you not have kids or you just wanted to adopt for other reasons? So both I always okay. wanted to adopt. Um, okay. okay. And that we'd have kids biologically too. Um, but the biological thing like wasn't happening okay. and okay. we were pretty laid back. So we we're just like, ah, eh, maybe that means like God wants us to go through yep. the adoption first. And okay. so we, we did, um, adopted Elijah and then, um, then found out that I actually couldn't have kids, had to have a full hysterectomy. I see. Okay. And then, okay. and then went through with adopting Amos and we had plans to, to keep going. Um, but one, one more question before we move over to Jeff on the personal stuff. Yeah. Did that test your faith? I mean, it had to have tested your faith a little bit, didn't it? I mean, I, I know it would have tested mine because I would be like, I'd be looking up there and be going, you got to be kidding me. You took him away from me. Like, come on now. You know, right. well, yeah. did, did that affect you? Did you go through some stuff there? Yeah, of course it did test my faith. Um, as it would for anyone, I think so. um, but yes. you know, mm -hmm. I, I really early on realized that I couldn't get caught up in the why because there's just no answer that's going to take our pain away. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think a lot of people, they want to know why. And it's like, I, I do have strong faith. And I do understand that when we're on this side of heaven, like we just can't always see everything or know everything. There's not always a clear why. Um, especially, you know, why didn't God do a miracle is one thing like, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. people would, would say and one thing that I just said is we don't know that there wasn't a miracle because we were about to get in the car and drive home from the cabin in about an hour before this happened or like after this happened, we were about to drive home. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what if this happened to him while he was mm -hmm. driving the truck with me, Elijah mm -hmm. and Amos in there? Mm -hmm. Like, I can't even imagine. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so I just, I know that we can't see and we can't know everything. And so um, ultimately I just had to rely on that faith and just lean closer to God in that. So And, and lean into life too, to where every single day you wake up, you're like, okay, cool. I'm still here. That's, that's, that's great. I got another day. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because that's a yeah. reality we all know, but we don't want to really <laughs> believe. So right. So um, true, yes. So you realize it in such a real way and you just, um, it has shaped the way that we live our life mm -hmm. right now. We don't plan for retirement. We just are like, we want to live the life we've yeah. always wanted yeah. to live right now. Yeah, That's what's important to us. You know, so that's one of the little things I say in my daily prayer in the morning. So, so I'm not a very, first of all, I grew up in Oklahoma. My mom was assembly God. So I was in church a lot when I was mm -hmm. little yeah. and she's still very, uh, you know, she tries to resave me every time I go home. So, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's all right. Amazon just delivered and our dogs just went it's off. It's all right. So yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's good. So my mom's still very, very, you know, my whole family that lives in Oklahoma, just about, you know, it's a, it's a Bible built, of course. Yeah. And, um, so I grew up, you know, uh, in church and, and, uh, I don't, you know, my faith is not really strong now, uh, like yours, I guess I would say compared to yours, it's not, but I do still pray. Uh, and I do still believe, right. I, I sin more than I should, but, uh, I do still pray. I still do still believe. But one of the things I do say when I'm, when I'm doing my little thing in the morning, my little routine is mm -hmm. I just kind of have this little thing where I'm like, 
great. I woke up. It's I'm here. It's another day. Thank you. Happy yeah. to happy to be part of it. Thank, yeah. Thanks a lot. Kind of kind of a thing, right? Because you just never know. And and as I get older, I'll be 56 this summer. You know, I start to know more guys that stuff happens to them, right? They wake up and then they go to the doctor and then they get diagnosed with this or that or whatever. Yeah. Just got one yesterday from a friend of mine, found out his wife's going to die unless she gets a liver transplant. And so wow. now I'm old enough to where every day I'm just like, cool, I got another day. Great. Yeah. Never know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, thank you so much for sharing that, Allie. Thank you. Yeah. That's uh, that, that I'm sure that shaped you in a lot of ways jeff um now we were i'm, I'm hoping you're going to tell me you were a rebel and you got in all kinds of trouble you were like in a gang or something no none of that <laughs> i was a pastor does you're that so does that close. help at all like i was so not show quite. me your tattoos do you got any tattoo no i'm just playing right here just that's it right there you see those uh, okay what does that say i can't read it so it's it's hebrew you okay. read it from uh, left to right, read it opposite or right to left. And so it's it's Psalm 1834. And it, it says, uh, he trains my hands for battle and strengthens my arm to draw back a bronze bow. So this is uh, David like saying this. I actually got this tattoo in Jerusalem. Uh, oh, was, really? Oh, yeah, wow. Cool. A group of friends. There's 22 of us total and um, 20 of the group got tattoos and the only two that didn't were my 13 and 15 year old sons at the time. <laughs> and uh, my 13 year old son, Noah is like, dad, please, can I get a tattoo? He's like, I'll be the coolest kid in middle school. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'd love uh, to, but I'd probably be the worst parent in middle school. So anyway, uh, yeah. yeah. So, and I got these tattoos. Um, cool. I got this tattoo uh, eight months, seven months after my wife passed of cancer. And so I see. Like, okay. So yeah. that's how you're that. Okay. So your wife passed oh, what breast cancer. Do you mind me asking? Yeah. Breast cancer. We, uh, we fought it for three years. Okay. Um, and had a, a year of where we call it the year of battle. Mm. And then there was a year of like kind of reprieve and then it came back and, and, in by the time we found out it was back to the time that she had passed was, uh, seven months. So say, this, super quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does she have the, 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 did she have, I know that, oh my gosh, we just got this from one of our recruiters uh, recently uh, on the team here at Ryder Flex. Um, she just got diagnosed and she's going to immediately go in for the double mastectomy and the reconstructive surgery. Did yep. you, did, did your wife try that? Did she, did she try that? Was it too late or? All of it. Yeah. We went in and we tried holistically for a bit, tried a holistic route because we thought, Hey, let's give this a shot. And mm -hmm. The holistic doctor we were talking to just said, hey, he go, He just said it was by the time we had found it, I think it may have been stage three already. We didn't know. They weren't quite sure. So she went in for the, mm -hmm. she had a round of chemo uh, or um, like a multiple rounds of chemo mm -hmm. and then a, a double mastectomy reconstructive 30 rounds of radiation. Like it was really intense. So it was like a year that we, we battled it. And then uh, she seemed good for about, well, for another year. And then it how came old back. were the boys at that time? They're in that three-year period. They were. So um, this is at the time I had my wife, Tiffany, and I had five children together. Oh, and oh, so, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So two boys earlier. So we okay, have five. seven now together. Well okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> in real, right. And so, uh, so Tiffany and I had uh, five children together and our youngest was probably around two at that time. And, um, wow, and bro. oldest okay. was probably 14. And so mm -hmm. just, yeah. So it'll be four years this July that she's passed. And so, um, yeah, so that was did kind of the have, time. For did you have family around to help you uh, with that? I mean, uh, and how, yeah, I mean, that's a whole nother podcast. Uh, five, yeah, five kids, you, you're taking care of your wife trying to work. I, I don't know if you did work. I mean, wow, bro. Okay. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. I was, I was running the church, like in this time frame. I've been a pastor for uh, 27 years. Yeah. You were and, a pastor. I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. So 15, the first 15 years of that, I was in youth ministry. So it was primarily zero to 18 that I focused on. And I started a church. Uh, so in a, in a town of about 20,000, uh, it was named Northfield, Minnesota was the town. Okay. Okay. And it's about 45 minutes, 45 minutes South of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, and so that grew rapidly. It was a, a large church in a smaller community. And when all of this happened, 
Um, but there was a lot of support from the church. There's a lot of support from, we had family members nearby, but during that time frame, during that three years, um, we actually even, like I led the church through that. The church grew. We built a building during that time, which is a whole nother thing. Fundraise, built a building. I talked, this is 2018 uh, or 2017 for me. It was the, I, I call it, it was the year of battling cancer and building canvas and canvas was the name of the church. I see. And there were times that I would go, I'd be in a, a three hour chemo session with my wife, Tiffany at the time, and then would go to a fundraising thing that night to raise mm. funds as mm. vision for building the church. And so it, it was a crazy time. And I think if I had, you know, going back, I don't, I don't know if I'd had put as much effort and time into the church as I did. I just thought, this is what you do. This is how you do it. And I was younger and dumber and, and, uh, mm -hmm. And so that was that was kind of the the place I was at. And I mean, a two year a two year old. Did you have parents? Did somebody help you? A family or just church members helped with your your kids? So uh, Tiffany's parents lived really nearby, and they helped on a regular basis. But we had a a lot of support from the church. I had one young couple. Like, and this is a great question because, like, you know, we'll talk to people or we'll counsel people that are walking through a scenario like this, and mm -hmm. you know, whether it's like, hey, how do I help someone going through a crisis, or hey, we're in a crisis. How do we allow people to help us? And, mm -hmm. and when you're in the crisis, it's sometimes hard for you to ask people to help because they're like, I just, I'm, I can do this. But we had uh, a couple different families that there was for maybe a year uh, during 2017, when we had to go through all of the, the chemo and the radiation and the surgeries. Mm -hmm. um, we had a young couple there in their twenties, a uh, young married couple. They would come to our house weekly. They would just gather all of our laundry take our laundry, wash our laundry, fold it, bring it back, put it back. They would do this weekly. Wow. And it's just exactly. like, it's mm -hmm. just strange when someone you consider a friend is like, you know, washing your underwear and folding yeah, it. And putting that it. would be it's just, a, yeah. it's yeah. a different level of humility. It's yeah. It's humbling. It's exactly. humbling. Mm -hmm. You nice. know, it's humbling that someone would do that, but I think sometimes we're too proud to allow people to do that. Mm -hmm. mm. So when you're battling something that all intensive like the things that fall away are like, okay, I forgot to eat today or, oh, you know what? I still have to mow the lawn, right? Or I guess someone has to do the laundry, but allow people to come on board and just do the things that they can. And it allows people to like serve you or feel like they're making a difference. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. we had another guy that's like, I will mow your lawn for the summer. And we're like, thank you. So I didn't even yes. say something like that. So really basic ways to help people mm -hmm. going through a crisis in basic ways to allow someone to help you while you're going through a crisis. Had so. you had you grown up in that atmosphere as well? Were your parents uh, religious with strong faith? Uh, or just curious what kind of atmosphere you grew up in and how you kind of leaned into that when you were younger? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, my family's kind of unique or I don't know. I mean, everyone's, everyone's family's unique, right? But yeah. uh, so my mom and dad, they uh, I'm the youngest of four. And they had my two older brothers really young in their marriage. And then they tried to get pregnant, couldn't get pregnant for like 10 years, maybe 11 years. They got pregnant with my older sister. So there's like a 13 year gap between me and my two older brothers. Okay. And um, so growing up, my dad was, he was, uh, before I was born, he was an alcoholic. He, mm -hmm. he drank a case of beer a day. He smoked five packs of cigarettes a day. He was a construction worker. He laid bricks and blocks and, um, that was his life. That's what he had grown up in. That's what had been modeled to him by his father. And okay. so they joined this multi, what is it? MCM yeah. Amway. Amway. They joined Amway oh. and, uh, to try to make some additional money. And, and, uh, there was this weekend conference in Chicago and there was a, a bonus session on Sunday morning that the people that invited them to come kind of set them up and said, Hey, there's a bonus session on Sunday morning. You want to come? They're like, sure. Well, it ended up being a church service. So in that service, they heard uh, the gospel for the very first time about Jesus coming to earth and dying for our sins. And, and what faith, uh, what faith? Christianity, uh, Mormon, what, what was it? Christianity. Oh, okay. Okay. Assembly of God, yeah. Pentecostal. What, what? Yeah, exactly. Like it was, it was at the time. Baptist. It was, it, okay. It was evangelical. Know. It was uh, just evangelical. Like okay. It okay. was just like totally Bible believing. Okay. And okay. Was, so they got, they gave their life to, to Christ. They got saved. And my dad never 
ever again uh, drank alcohol. It was like one of those things was gone. Wow. And um, which was a really big deal for him because every negative thing in his life had been associated with alcohol. Mm. And so, uh, and he was an orphan and raised by a, a guy that he didn't even know if it was his dad or not. And so it's just mm. really interesting. His, his life, all of that was kind of the, the root of the fruit that he was living before he came to know Jesus. And, and then he came to know Jesus and literally alcohol was gone. He quit smoking quickly afterwards, started going to church all the time. So growing up as a kid, I went to church like three times a week. Yeah. <laughs> and like I knew Jesus was real because like when I was maybe five, I would smart, you know, smart off to my dad, say smart, you know, just whatever, you know, like a five-year-old, seven-year-old, oh, like, yeah. sure. speak good stuff to your parents. You know, my dad yes. was bald, to call him baldy. Little did I know what was going to happen. <laughs> um, and so, but I remember my older brothers, I'd say something like that and they would kind of just, they'd pull back a little bit or flinch a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> and they said, if we had said that to dad when we were seven. All right. You've been knocked then. across the room. <laughs> and so they talk about like my uh, dad in that, like when they were young and I didn't know that man, mm, like the man I knew it, had, it was a totally different man because he had an experience with Jesus. And so how about that. Okay. How yeah. about that? That's pretty cool. I appreciate you sharing that story. So, Absolutely. so you grew, you grew up church three times a week, never got in much trouble. You, you always had strong faith for, from the I, moment you were. I did some stupid stuff, but like, you know, I, okay. you know, I, I walked, I wouldn't say walked away. I was, you know, in a space he where he was pretty squeaky clean. Let me just, there was the one time. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> when did you, when did you decide you were going going into the ministry yourself? What age did that happen? That's a great question. So I started working when I was 12, like I was 12 to 17. I, I sold sweet corn on the back of a truck. I worked like hundred hour, hundred hour weeks when I was like 12 to 15 in the summer. And I loved it. I wanted to go into business. That was my idea. That was my plan. Oh, Even okay. till like high school, I, I was accepted to university, had my roommate all picked out. And I was like, I'm going for business. That's the deal. And uh, actually uh, between my, probably my sophomore and senior year of high school, I went on five different missions trips to Mexico, like short term, like seven days you know, and I'm growing up in, in Wisconsin at the time. So like, Hey, do you want to go to Acapulco in January? And I was like, yes, I do. Yes. What yes, I doing? do. Yes, I do. <laughs> and so that started, I just remember going on these, on these trips and it was like, it was humanitarian. Like we were like, we were building buildings, we we're building churches. We were uh, helping okay. serve however we could. And mm -hmm. it was just interesting to me because it totally shifted my whole perspective uh, of life. Because, you know, I, I, I'd see these kids with virtually nothing. I saw this one little girl and she had this really vibrant colored dress on. And I was like, what a beautiful dress. And she's living in a mud hut. And I'm like, where is she? How is she keeping her dress so clean in a mud hut? I'm 17 thinking this. Mm -hmm. And then she wore the same dress every day. And I realized that's her only outfit. Mm -hmm. And then I flew home to Wisconsin and I'm living, I'm li literally living in a trailer court. Like I live in a trailer. And I'm looking at like my closet and like, man, I have more clothes than I can even think yeah. to, to wear. And I'm like on the lower end of, you know, maybe the lower end of middle class, higher end of poverty in the States and growing up and compared to what they have, I'm, I'm wealthy beyond mm -hmm. wildest dreams. Right. And it just, it messed with me. Okay. It just really did. Okay. And, uh, and I had a youth pastor at the time. He said, Hey, you should go to school and get a degree to go into ministry. And I'm like, why do you need a degree for ministry? Like, uh -huh. I'm just going to tell people about Jesus. And I uh, ended up going to a ministry school, listening to him. And it was a really okay. great. Movie. So I got a degree uh -huh. in youth ministry and, and which is youth studies and was a youth pastor for 15 years. So I see. Okay. And you and um, the name of your church now and where it's located, do you want to mention that or no? For sure. So right now, uh, it's a church that actually, the church I led in, in Northfield, Minnesota called Canvas Church. While I was on staff there, we we grew rapidly. And so I, I started uh, another campus or campuses elsewhere. And I also helped friends start churches elsewhere. And so one of my buddies from college said, hey, I'm going to start a church. Or I feel like I'm supposed to start a church in South Jordan, Utah. And I was like, well, we'll get behind you. We'd love to be a part of that. And so my church in Northfield actually help launch the church that we're at now that we're serving. We're just volunteers. Like we actually work in the kids area. Um, and 
Uh, it's called Seago Church, S-E-G-O, uh, okay. after uh, the Seago Lily, which is the state flower of Utah. So you didn't, you don't want to be the pastor. You don't have any desire to be pastor. You know, uh, it's interesting. I, I, it's, it's a unique space to be in because, um, uh, I'm really good at being a pastor. I'm just going to say that if your wife could edit that part out after we're done, here. I was good at it, but I always led, I led as more of a CEO type and more of a, like more of a coach than a shepherd, if that makes sense. Okay. So I always led the church in a very business oriented manner. Well, and it I, is, I mean, it does have to operate that way to a certain extent. I mean, it's great to spread the gospel, but if there's no money, there, there's no church. So, I mean, there's no lights if hundred percent. And that was like, I mean, that's how I led. And a lot of people, um, they don't necessarily expect that from a pastor or love that in a pastor. They okay. want oftentimes okay. someone who's more of a shepherd type personality. Mm. And I'm more of a driver. I'm more of a CEO. I'm more of a visionary. I'm more of a, Hey, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. Here we go. And, and so I just feel like I can be in a space where I can serve well. Okay. I'm speaking actually yeah. this Sunday, I'll still speak on Sundays occasionally, okay. uh, but we're leading in business now. And so um, it's an interesting question you ask. I go back yeah. and forth all the time. Uh, yeah, fair um, enough. I mean, no, fair enough. I, I'd probably be the same way. Yeah. I mean, my, my type A driven personality that took me to C-level executive probably wouldn't, wouldn't fall into the shepherd uh, lane. I don't think. I don't I, right. I'd be... <laughs> right. I, mean, uh, I might be the shepherd. I might be the shepherd, but the staff that I would be using would probably be. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And that was, that was sometimes a challenge where it's like lead and guide kindly or drive, you know? And yeah. I'm a bit of a driver. So, okay. Fair enough. Now I appreciate you sharing that with me. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Um, so you, after your, your wife passed, did you and Allie know each other from church? How how did you guys meet or how did you know each other? That's a great question. So we lived about an hour and a half apart. Um, okay. So we we didn't know each other. We weren't in the same community. Oh, okay. You hadn't um, met each other. Okay. All right. No, we were both on a dating website called Christian Mingle. Yeah, and, I've heard of it. I've heard of it, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so and I'll just say for those of you who are listening and are online dating right now or you have an online online dating profile somewhere we are so sorry yeah like it is it's <laughs> it's rough oh man it's rough it's a, rough there. Scene. It's a killer it's a yeah. killer yeah i know i know because my 32 year old son he's like dad they're they're all lying they're all lying they're all fake pictures he's like these this is driving me crazy anyway go ahead but anyways you're on the so you're on the thing <laughs> yeah. yes so we're on the thing. Um, yeah, Jeff sends me a winky face, and it was either, this is how adolescent it is. It was so it was either you could send a winky face or like a heart or a mm -hmm. smiley face, and I'm like, okay. I'm starting a conversation with someone who I may want to be in a relationship with and maybe want to marry one day. And the initial interaction is a winky face emoji. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Anyways, <laughs> so that's what he sent me, and. Um, so I saw his profile and I got, I got really excited because like you said, people aren't really who they're claiming to be a lot no, of the no. time. Um, no. So I saw that he was a pastor and so I'm like, well, he's got to have some level of strong faith if he's a pastor, right? Yep. Um, yep. So I thought that was good. And then I saw that he was a widower and I had not met anyone else who had been through what I had been through. So mm. um I was, that's pretty much all I saw. I didn't actually pay for well, those service. are two big ones. Those are two yeah, big ones yeah. right there. Those are, those are huge. Yeah. Yeah. Limited information otherwise, so, but Ali didn't actually pay for it. There's the, the, the free one that you can only get so far with. Yeah. And she didn't pay. I paid for the full one. Cause I was like, all right, let's see what we can do okay, here. So yeah. I got to, she was the smart um, one. Yeah. So anyway, I, I really overthought what, you know, what to say or what to ask him. And so I asked him really the dumbest question ever. Like, where it did you, go to, yeah. where did you go to ministry school? Um, and so then he never responded and I was like, I, that's because he was already, he had already moved on to like eight profiles later. Yeah. He's, he's scrolling, he's winking yeah. at like seven others. <laughs> so, this, this part of the story of our story makes me look really, really bad, mm -hmm. but it, but it's the it, truth. It's the so, truth. So, so he didn't respond. And, um, I got together with a friend of mine uh, from church and she was asking me, how's dating going? And, yeah, and it I sucks. Told, 
Sorry, you I, don't, know, I don't mean to use that word. That's probably not the kind of language you totally. use. Yeah. No, it no, sucks. It sucks. It's awful. It sucks. It's like fine. online dating is horrible. And I said, um, you know, the only guy that I was really excited about never responded to me. Uh-huh. And I described him like this. I was like, he was um, a pastor, a widower and really cute. And she looks at me and she goes, Jeff. And I was like, well, oh. yeah, that was Whoa. that was his name. And so she pulls up her phone pulls up Facebook and she's like, was this him? And I'm like, yes, that was the exact picture. of him. And she goes, I know Jeff, I grew up with him. I love him. He's an amazing person. You have to meet him. Holy cow. Okay. That didn't happen by accident. That crazy, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So she's like, can I, can I message him and try to connect you to like, if nothing comes of it, I think you can be friends, have this shared experience, all the things. So she messaged him. Mm -hmm. So on my side of the world, on my side of the World Wide Web, uh, I was so fed up with online dating and these profiles. And it was just in some of the people like there's a lot of crazies out there. Like your son. Yes, absolutely. Like it's, it's kind of nuts. Mm-hmm. And um, I was just like, I'm done. I'm done with this. Like, so I, I just like, I literally like unplugged, deleted, erased all of them. And okay. so, um, but in the mean, and part of the thought was like, I just had this sense that whomever the next Mrs. Went is, and her last name is Went, uh, that God knew who she was, A, and B, that like, just through my network, like someone out there has to know, like some, you know, mm-hmm. a, some attractive female that's like, Hey, she'd be great for Jeff. And so, um, and that was, that was my thought process. So literally I unplugged it, deleted it, all the things never responded. Um, and so then, then our mutual friend reaches out to me and says, Hey, are you interested in dating? And, uh, you know, and I was like, well, sure, I, but I am, but more yeah. context. <laughs> you know? she's like, well, I have a really great friend named Allie who, uh, she's actually a, a widow, Um, she's an incredible woman. She'd be amazing for you to meet, talk to, you know, uh, even about what you guys shared experience and, oh, and by the way, you actually met her initially on Christian Mingle. (laughs) And I was like, okay. Did you remember? Did you remember? No, I didn't remember. I didn't remember. Okay. Okay. I said, oh, I remember, you know, I I remember Allie and she sent me a picture and I was like, I totally remember Allie. And so she gave me her phone number and um, do I go into the rest of the story? Well, we won't take too much longer. Yes. But then, you know, he just, he didn't call for a while longer. Now, before before that, though, Allie, when did you find out he had five kids? Because that, 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 that is, I don't want to say a red flag, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it makes it more challenging. <laughs> 100%. Like that's, I, yeah. I found that out when I talked to my friend because she filled me in since okay. I Okay, so she told you. I was, she filled right. me in on the whole right. I was getting ready to give her a hard time if she didn't tell you until you actually got together with, with Jeff. Yeah. And then I'd be like, oh, come oh, on now. Huh? Right. So uh, um, right. he what? did know what I was getting into, okay. even though I truly didn't. But yeah. All right. <laughs> yes. All right. When, she said, when she said five kids, were you like, hmm? Let me mm-hmm. let me just pause for a second. <laughs> um, I was I was to some degree, but another part of our story that you know is just God working in our story is yeah. um in in a quick nutshell, uh from a really young age, you asked, you know, did I want to adopt? Was that you know, mm-hmm, did we mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. were we able to have kids? And so from a really young age, I like dreamt about adopting and I dreamt about having like just a large kind of oh okay all right all right ethnic family, family. Okay. um okay and so that was just really interesting how you know finding out that I couldn't have kids biologically I'm like well that's probably not going to happen for us because adoption's really expensive so mm-hmm. maybe three right mm-hmm. like hopefully you get twins and get a I two see. for one sort of thing oh. um but it just seemed like that dream was dying the mm-hmm. longer and longer time went Jeff, on now jeff do you understand how blessed you are can you imagine so Allie is sent to you yeah she wants to have a lot of kids she's beautiful she's smart she's a widow like you are she she her, she's a, she, her faith is like yours like are you kidding me i mean 
Wow, well, then, bro. You, you, you wake up every day. You wake up every day. Thank you, God. Thank yes. you, God. Right? <laughs> and then the fact that we literally met in one of the most divisive seasons in, in our country's history. We met in 2020. Mm-hmm. So right. Did you, right? don't tell me you met with a mask on the front. You didn't like come. You didn't like, oh, nice no, that we, was we a precursor. We we're outside. A, a, but if I had walked up with right. a mask or she walked up with it, it would have been like, we what's going on? Like yeah. A- yeah. Wow. Like, would we have engaged or just walked away? Like, that's that question. So, yeah. Wow. What a, st- what a, st- okay. Wow. What a story. All right. Uh, now you're married and you have how many kids? Seven? Seven. Yep. Yes, sir. And the oldest is how old now? He's a senior in 18. high school, 18. Uh, we gave him the option when we moved out here, we moved out here uh, from Minneapolis to Salt Lake. It was last August, August, okay. uh, August of 2022. So we've been here about nine months and just gave him the option. Like we knew like, Hey, uh, oh, I see. Yep. senior mm-hmm. year of high school, yep. 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 Move yep. And graduate with 3000 strangers mm-hmm. or stay at, with grandma and grandpa, live with them and graduate with, you know, your 300 closest friends that you've had since oh, first. Yeah. So he's, he's finishing school out in Minnesota. He's thriving, doing really great out there. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. We have six, uh, six other Ages five yeah. through sixteen, still here in the house. Oh man, it's busy at your house. You know, there's always there's always something going on in your house. Oh <laughs> yeah, it's it's always. five boys and one girl too. So that I mean gives you a little bit of context. Yeah. Oh, your daughter, she's gonna be a tough one. She's gonna be a tough one. She's tough. She's like, yeah, she's, don't mess with her. She is. Oh, so. so right now, uh, first of all, thank you so much. I mean, the the fact that you're so open to sharing your personal story, I think is is touching, moving, uh, and strikes an emotional chord with listeners. I think, you know, you could come in and pitch your coaching all day long and they're like, okay, another business coach. Yeah. All right. I've talked to a hundred of these, but the fact that you have real human stories that you're open about sharing will help you relate to people because everybody's been through something, maybe not what you've been through, but People will look at you and be like, wow, okay, now these are real people. They got real scars. They've been through real things. They're not, they're not just trying to sell me their coaching. Like these are real human beings I can relate to and I can talk to. And I think that I think that matters. I think that really matters. So it's it's great that you're sharing it. Appreciate, well, appreciate you. you doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell me for what you're doing now with wake coaching. Yep. Give me the who wants to give the who wants to give the 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 initial overview and then I'll I'll ask some questions. You want to do it? Um, <laughs> I'll do it. So basically, okay. uh, what we do we do business coaching and it's based upon uh, an EOS model, which is entrepreneurial operating system, mm-hmm. which is outlined in the book called Traction by a guy named Gino Wickman. Yes. Now Gino wrote it like twenty years ago, and basically it just helps business owners, entrepreneurs. Uh, get all they've wanted out of their business, uh, mm-hmm. as well as like feel like they own their business rather than their business owning them. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's super practical. Mm-hmm. I know sometimes everyone's kind of looking for the silver bullet or the magic pill. And I think the silver bullet is just hard freaking work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it starts but, there. <laughs> yeah. But working the right way, right? Like working smarter rather than harder. And uh, the tools in EOS really allow you to work smarter. Mm-hmm. Um, now, our stories with EOS, uh, Allie did it in the family, her family business did this. Uh, uh, I see. Her dad owned the business for 25 years and Allie was a part of it for 16 years. And then uh, what was it like the nine year mark or eight year mark? You guys decided to implement EOS and, and oh, that's where the tie in is. I see. Okay. All yeah. right. And so in a nutshell, uh, her dad had built the business from basically it was going underwater, like it was going out of business, it was underwater mm-hmm. in 16 years to 6 million annual revenue and 70 employees in the health and human services field. So really doing well, mm-hmm. but the need was so great. They're like, how do we expand it to meet the growing need? And so they brought in an EOS implementer. Uh, and really the idea was how do we, how do we expand our capacity, expand our business? So okay. their goal was to double the size of the business from 70 employees to 140 and 6 million annual revenue to 12 million revenue in right. 10 years. That was like the, the big, hairy, audacious goal, right? right. And uh, they implemented EOS and actually met that or reached that goal in four years. And then they that? actually tripled it 
uh, to evaluation of 18 million and 180 employees in uh, seven years. And I asked Bill, I was like, Bill, what was the secret? And he said it was implementing EOS. So and the bill is your dad, Alan. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when, and when Jeff is saying they, do you mean you, your sister, your dad, your mom, that the family, it was a family business. Family yeah. business. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. The crew, the team. Yeah. And so, um, so that was, so around year seven of that, Allie and I are married. Um, I grew the church rapidly in a, in a space. We had a bunch of plateaus, a bunch of ceilings pushing through and it's at a really frustrated space that I felt like I kept recreating the wheel. And I was like, I've been here before. And I know as a leader, oftentimes you come back to the same spot. You're like, how am I here again? Did I not Mm -hmm. learn? Aren't I smarter than this? Mm -hmm. All these things are going on in my head. And I was about to hire a really high-end coach. It was like $1,500 an hour to help me push past $1,500 $1,500 an hour, right? Crazy. And uh, I told Allie this and she's like, just read this book. And she slid traction, the book traction across my desk. And I was like, okay, I should probably read the $15 book that my wife told me to before I hire the $1,500 an hour coach. <laughs> I'm super bougie. And like, I'd really love to do that. Um, so I read the book and literally page after page as I'm reading through it, I'm like, where has this been for 10 years of leading the church? I was like, this is what I wanted for 10 years. Mm years. It's just, wow. it's, it's not, um, it, it's simple, but it's not easy, right? Like mm-hmm. sometimes like simple equals easy. No, no, no. It's, it's simple. Like what the, the process is outlined, mm-hmm. this is how you do it. It's not easy to do, but it's so worthwhile. And mm-hmm. so I said, Ali, I said, how do we uh, incorporate this or implement this in the church? And so I actually stole Ali from the family business and she came and implemented uh, EOS into the church I was leading. Interesting. It, okay. Probably right. the best I don't know, the best testimonial of how it works is that a staff member who was with me for eight years, eight of the 10 years that we're leading the church up to that point. He said, we've done a lot of things in eight years, but in the past six months on EOS, we've done far more things. Like just as far as alignment, efficiency, I was like, wow, that mm. was great to hear. It hurt my heart because I thought we were pretty smart before that. Uh, but I was like, no, we're on the right path. And he's actually leading the church today. After I left, uh, we voted him in and he's mm-hmm. he's leading the church today. So that's a little bit of our experience with EOS. Mm-hmm. And so. And, and did you then when you stepped down from being a pastor, uh, um, is that alley when you you guys talked about, OK, well, let's if, if we're not going to lead a church, let's take what we've learned and lead a consulting business with, 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 is that, was that, is that how it happened? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we really, like I, I said earlier, um, we don't want to live for like 10 years from now, like working hard so that in 10 years we can really enjoy life. Like yeah. we were just really in this place where like, we're starting fresh, we're moving to Utah. This is, a new chapter for us as a family, as a couple together. Um, And we really want to just lead a life that like we're happy Mm -hmm. and we're not looking forward to 10 years from now or to retirement, but we're, we're just, we're happy. We're fulfilled. Okay. Um, And so we're like, was your, were your, were your folks disappointed? You left the business. Was your dad like, Allie, where are you going? I need you here. Um, I think that my family knew with what I had been through that, like, I was just probably going to be a wild card, um, in okay. where I was going to end up. And so okay. I think they saw the writing on the wall, but my All sister right. for sure was the most sad because we were both part of the succession team, um, mm-hmm. and had planned to buy the business from my dad. So mm-hmm. I left and she was left to do it all alone, but she's doing great. And she doesn't need me at all. Um, Do you still do you, this may be too personal. Do you still have a piece of the business equity ownership as a daughter? Do you still own a piece of it while she runs it? Or how does that work? um, I was bought out of that. So it's it's all hers. Um, Well, that helped, that helped pay for your move to Utah. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) It was perfect. It worked out exactly the way it was supposed to. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, so we decided just like what what is going to be something that a we can make a living doing, but much more importantly, that is a passion point for us that we're going to feel mm-hmm. fulfilled and like right. Right. you know have have fun with. Isn't so. it? Isn't it? And I uh, I know we're getting closer on time, but if we go over just a couple of minutes, are you guys okay here? I'll try to move fast here. You probably got another meeting coming yeah. up. Yeah. Um, I'm so happy to hear you say like, look, we're going to enjoy life in the moment and we're going to do something that we feel passionate about. 
I, I'm in the recruiting space for a living during the day job, right? I meet so yeah. many people. They're just looking for the next job. They're just like, I just got to I just got to find another job so I can make my mortgage payment. I just got to get another yeah. job that make, I got my mortgage payment is this, my car payment is this. I just got to get another job to make this much money to just do that. And I always tell them like, no, man, I mean, no, like, that's not what life is. Please find something that you are passionate about that you enjoy doing. And if that doesn't match the money, then change your situation. Yeah. Don't, don't chase a job for a certain amount of money to pay for these material things that will not bring you happiness long-term. I've said that over and over and over. And yeah. so it's so great to hear you say that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the last part of this little rant is we're always telling our kids, we have four grown children. I'm always telling them, I'm like, look, I'm just telling you right now, we're spending it all. I'm spending it all while I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a good time. I'm, we're going to have a good time. Kim and I are going to travel. We're going to spend while we're healthy, yeah. while we can. Yeah. You know, yeah. if we have a few things left, you guys can split it up and we're gone. But I'm not saving a couple of million to be okay. 80 and not have experienced life. I ain't doing that. I've told yeah. you many times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amen. But, yeah. We agree. It's a beautiful thing. And I think there's there's a, a different perspective you have on life when you've lost life mm -hmm. at a young age. Right. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, and so that for us is like, okay, we're, we're building for the future, but we're living today. Mm -hmm. If that makes that. sense. We're not yes. like, you Love know, it. just blown up credit cards and spending unwisely and doing things like that. It's like, no, we're, we're wise with what we're doing. Wise. We're wise towards, but, but enjoying we're, we're yeah. living today, you know? And so that, you know, that one day in the future we'll live fine as well. But for today, we're, we're making sure that we're enjoying today. Well, and that's kind of the through line with EOS too. EOS was created to help business owners live the life they want to live while leading their business. And Right. We've talked to a number of business owners actually recently that mm -hmm. feel like they just have to get to the sale of their business yeah. to finally like really start yeah. living. Yeah. And we're like, no. hey, right now, no. it doesn't sound like I mean, with the conversations mm -hmm. we had, it doesn't sound like now is even a good time to sell. But that yeah. doesn't mean that you have to wait mm -hmm. to get freedom, to enjoy life, to yeah. not be working 24 seven. And so- isn't That's it amazing? Oh, go ahead. Isn't, it, isn't it amazing how people always think if I can just they always say that, right? If I can just get here, if I can yeah. just get if I can just get that neighborhood, if I can just, just get want that neighbor. that house, yeah. if I can just make this much, if I can just get to this point, everything's gonna be fine. I was yeah. like, no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, no, if you're not content to a degree where you're at, like there's this weird thing, tension with contentment, right? Like contentment is like, no, I'm good with what I have. Like be good with what you have, but also know there's more in you to chase after. So it's like, I'm good with this house because mm -hmm. this is a wise decision right now. Mm -hmm. And rather than going getting a bigger house so I can prove to everyone I'm making a bunch more money and then yeah. I have a bunch more stress because I have to bring in that money to pay for the bigger house so I can press the neighbor. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. Be cool with the house you have yeah. and literally invest somewhere else. Go buy a second house. Go buy a VRBO. Go buy, go do something else with that mm -hmm. to build more. Awesome. And so it, it's, it's an interesting awesome. thing. There's a lot of people where it's like, if I could just do like what you're saying, mm -hmm. one more thing, then I'll be happy. If you're not happy where you're at, you're not going to be happy there because it's a different location, but you're the same person. Right. Totally agree. Totally we're agree. Um, Allie, uh, are you guys uh, target? So you're targeting, what is it? Uh, 10 to 200 employees. What's the target on the businesses yeah, you're helping? 10 to yeah. 250 is kind of an ideal size for a full EOS implementation. Okay. And are yeah. you, is Wake Consulting having to pay EOS a fee to coach and implement their system? How, what's your business model? Great question. So yeah, I am the certified professional EOS implementer between okay. the two of us. Okay. Um, and to become that is actually purchasing a franchise with EOS. Yep. Oh, I see. I see. One yep. time, one time purchase, or do you have to pay a percentage of revenue after? Um, it's one time purchase for the franchise, but there's also kind of monthly support fees involved. I guess ongoing as well. So those support fees have to be paid even if you don't have any clients. 
Correct. Correct. Yep. Ooh, ooh, okay. I don't know if I like that part. I have to talk to <laughs> the CEO of the US. <laughs> yeah, it's then it's yeah. a flat fee. So the more you grow, yeah. you know, with clients, um, it's not a percentage of your revenue. That fee just stays okay. flat. So there's, you know, some pros and cons to that, but for and sure. Is- Startup, that's more challenging. Are you implementing a SaaS system then uh, to a certain degree? Once you do the once you do the in person coaching, is it then like oh, okay, I log in like a SaaS or, or or what? No, so there's some really great partners with EOS that have created software that will help you know help you do everything. Um, but EOS itself is not software in any way. It's okay. really just um, daily, very practical disciplines. Okay. is a good way to think of it mm-hmm. um for your business to run on and your leadership team to run on if 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 a company hires you guys wake consulting are they paying wake consulting and then once you get paid you're paying you you they're they're not touching eos your clients aren't touching eos is that right no yeah they're just okay. working with us and so yeah the the franchise um is with eos implementation but we okay. also have wake coaching as our own um Oh, our own business. Yeah. And so part of what we do too is, um, you know, with EOS, there's a very certain target market, market, sorry, um, like you asked 10 to okay. 250 people in size for the business. Okay. okay. Um, but, you know, here in Utah, especially we meet a ton of startups and solopreneurs and people that are just getting going. And so we just have a passion for, I'm really helping them because a lot of the disciplines and principles that EOS teaches can be beneficial even at the very beginning. And yeah, so, but at, the, but at the very beginning, they don't have the money to pay people like you. So how do you do that? <laughs> we've actually, we've, we've broke it down where it's like, you know, when Ali was saying the 10 to 200 employees, uh, the majority of businesses in the United States are 10 employees or nine employees or less. So 80% of businesses aren't target markets. So, We've created two different offerings for uh, individuals in that space. Okay. Uh, one of them we call onboard, where the idea is we actually get on board with you. We're kind of like a, a fractional leadership team, okay. uh, help you, you know, discover your core values, help you figure out, you know, the type of people you want to hire to actually be on your lead team to prepare you uh, for whatever's next, and that might be an EOS implementation or it might not be. I and see. So- we kind okay. of jump on board with you. So that's like, we're with you uh, twice a month talking through these things. And then we have one-on-one coaching where uh, it's literally, we, um, you know, whoever the client is, I have a client in Minnesota that I talk to on a regular basis where he's a real estate broker. And we're talking about how to manage some of his, his 1099 staff. And then on okay. the flip side, talking about how to manage their life and and how a nanny uh, is actually a part of the team and they need a nanny if they're going to function in their business well. And so there's this interesting thing about business coaching that when you get into someone's business, you get into their business, right? Like, it's just like, it's just life. You're doing Mm -hmm. life together. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah. So when you're touching, when you're, when you're touching prospects or clients or customers, Sometimes you'll pivot. You'll you, they'll they'll hire you for weight cons- consulting, but then maybe okay now EO, EOS is good for you. We'll go ahead and implement that or or something yeah. to that to that degree. Yeah. Um, not to mention, how about life coaching? You guys could just be. I mean, yeah. Forget about the business aspect. How about yeah. just all the things that people go through in life based on your own experiences with your parents and everything else? Like, I might just pay for that. <laughs> you know, I mean, do you, does that happen? Do you do, does it bleed over? Does it does it all bleed together, or how, what happens there? I mean, with the one on one coaching, absolutely, it does. Yeah. It's a yeah. little bit more um, based on that person. It might be their professional goals, but it also um, when you're looking at one person, you can't really just only talk about things with within the professional realm without also getting into their personal life or belief yeah. systems yeah. or yeah. you know whatever is going on so it's like we're such holistic beings um you can't really address one without the mm-hmm. other and mm-hmm. so okay. um, especially with that one-on-one coaching we go kind of everywhere mm-hmm. <laughs> what what percentage of your revenue do you see being weight consulting versus eos implementation how do you how do you see it going well, the disparity between the two, the EOS implementation is much more expensive. Okay. Um, that's just a, a, a spendier price tag mm-hmm. because you are in that that space where you can afford it to a 
degree where okay. what we're running into with the well, and component. I mean you're working with an entire leadership team and yeah, you're yeah, impacting yeah, yeah, an entire yeah. organization okay. over two years so it's just yeah. it's a very robust um very it's a two year it's a two-year contract to, to do that if I if I wanted the US implemented here at Riderflex it's two years yep um and it's not a contract but yes on average it takes about two years to to run through the full process it's not a contract I want to dig deeper there do I have to pay you month to month or do I have to pay you all at one year up front what what how does that work because you know all business owners like me that's the first question how exactly. much is it? How much is this, and how long is the contract? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit of a pay as you go type service. So we oh, meet with okay. the leadership team um, on a monthly basis for okay. a while, and then on a quarterly basis, kind of for a remainder of the time. And so um, they just pay as they go. Okay. Um, oh, I see. Oh, they pay as they go, and you're telling them it could take two years, but if they run out of money in three months, they can stop. Yeah, we're not going to completely not, at will. Yep, yeah. completely at will. And we might okay. get into it and we've got to do it with a couple of clients that they think they're ready for it. They're excited for it. They get into it. They're like, whoa, this is too much. And it's not like, well, we'll see you next month. And here's the bill. It's like, no, we. how can we help you? How can we help you get to that space? Mm -hmm. How can we help you feel like it? If you feel like it's too much, that's great. We'll step back. That's good. How can we assist you with the tools we've taught you and are trained you in already? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, okay. so I mean, I think- that's what we do. We love to see people win. And so, yeah, how we can you help? Every business that I've ever seen, whether I've run it myself and I ran a couple of $40 million companies before I started Rider Flex, and I've been involved yeah. with so many different things as an advisor or whatever. Every business is messy to a certain degree. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the primary reason they're messy is because human beings are involved. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so my point is, I, everybody's a target for you. As long as they can afford it, every business needs some help if mm -hmm. the founders and the owners will just admit that they need help. You know, sometimes you get these, especially the older ones, you know, where like, I've been doing this for 10 years and this way we've always done it. And OK, Johnny, I know, but it's not working. So open mm -hmm. your open your mind. Yeah. That's the key is yeah. admitting it. Mm -hmm. They all need, they all need, they all need help. And usually it comes down to the human element, which you guys seem to be excellent at it. it I mean, okay, let's just assume they have a decent product that people want to buy or service, right? Let, let's just yeah. make the assumption that they got, they got, they got a, they got a mug that people like, or they got a service that people want. Yep. From there, it, it usually is just a human messy communication alignment yeah. thing uh, yeah. of some kind. And you strike me as the type of people that are patient enough patient enough and and the way you present and the way you carry yourself is very calming so for for a wound up type a you know ceo you guys are like i can just feel you kind of like okay yeah it's all right it's all right yeah. johnny and you're just putting your arms around them and you're like it's gonna be calm down we're gonna talk yeah. about this i can feel it on you i can feel it yeah. on you. That's That's awesome. Awesome. And, and, and i don't and i'm and i'm really impressed you know like the wrapping up here there are so many people that have been through things like you that are just bitter, right? They're bitter. Mm -hmm. They're pissed off. They hate the world. Now they're a full blown addict, whatever. Yeah. But you came out of it better, not bitter. Yeah. And I stole that line from a guy who was just on the podcast recently. He, he did, he did, he did six years in prison for, for something that he readily admitted and said, I messed up. Mm -hmm. I did my time. Anyway, he was such a positive guy. Now he's like a CFO for a company. Yeah. And this, he's like, he was like, listen, man, I was in prison for six years with like hardcore guys where bad things happened. But, but yeah. meanwhile, he's just like this positive, like, I'm just blessed to be alive. I'm just so happy to be here. And I'm looking at him I'm like, bro, like, how do you, like, how do you have this attitude? You guys are kind of the same way a little bit. Like, how do you yeah. have this attitude? And he said that he gave me that line. He's like two kind of people that come out of prison. Bitter or better? And he goes, yeah. and I told myself I was going to come out better. And you guys mm -hmm. came out better too with everything that's happened to you. I mean, look at you. Great. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks is for it, your time. Congratulations. Is there a website link? Where do you want to point people? How do how do they get a hold of you? How do they hire you? How do they contact you? Um, so I think the best way we we're not very techie, to be honest with okay. you. Um, okay. We don't spend a lot of time on social media. 
um, it's just not where we want to devote ourselves. So we can okay. give you like email addresses. And I honestly, I just, I want to connect with people. So okay. reach out. We want to meet you. We want to talk with you. Um, you know, we can provide social media links and everything too. We do have it, but it's really all about, um, we love mm -hmm. to connect with people. Mm -hmm. So just okay. reach out. Allie, now you're on LinkedIn. They can find you on LinkedIn. I know you have a profile. Jeff, I didn't look for yours before the call. Are you on as LinkedIn as well? We're actually friends on LinkedIn. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have no, known I'm that. So totally yeah, family. I'm on LinkedIn as well. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. So if they if they connect with you on LinkedIn and send you a message there, and then when we do yeah. the post, we'll we'll put an email address in or whatever. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Sir. And we okay. do have like the social media, like the um jeffrey r went or jeffrey went that's normally mine on whether it's instagram okay. or facebook okay. or linkedin and so there is that dm us there that's great uh, i, I can't like we'll 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 be immediate on it because we're like ali said email is wonderful it's a way to contact us but it's not the best way to really like engage with us or find yeah. understood more. yeah understood okay well Thank you very much for sharing your story on the Rider Flex podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the opportunity too. It's honestly our honor to be able to share it and um, just speak into life. So yeah, we appreciate Steve, it. Thank you.